All right, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, we'd ask you to turn to the Gospel of John, John chapter 10, and we're going to begin reading in verse 24. John chapter 10, beginning in verse 24. The Bible says, Then came the Jews round about him, and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Let's pray. God, we praise you and thank you for your blessed book. God, we thank you for your church, Lord, and the truth that it stands for. God, we pray for each and every individual that sets before me this day, Lord, that you would bless them. God, that beyond just the sweet breath of life, that you would give them life this morning. Lord, the lost that be among us, that you'd speak life unto them. We'd be pray faithful to praise you and give you glory for it, for it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, maybe some not so familiar verses, but uh, sometimes as we read the Word of God, uh, we tend to forget this one thing, and that is Christ is God. Uh, there are three manifest manifestations of the Lord God of heaven, the Lord God the Father Jehovah, the Lord Jesus Christ his Son, and the Holy Ghost. And all three are always in unison, they're always one, but uh, as we see uh, the Lord God put in, the Bible says, in the likeness of sinful flesh, because he had no sin. Uh, he was placed inside a body. He was placed inside of the likeness of man, but he did not have the sin nature of man. And that is the difference. Now, when we behold the Christ in this entity, it's very easy to forget that he's very much God. Mm -hmm. And time and time and time again, you'll three see through the scriptures that uh, he displays himself as much as God as he does anything else, but there are few that be huh, that see it. So going back to our uh, text verse, in verse 24, the Bible says, Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long doest thou make us to doubt? Now, I want you to notice two things. First of all, <clears throat> When they came around him, uh, you will find this, they were, they were wanting to kill him. They, they were surrounding him just like a group surrounds someone that's fixing to be stoned or put down. They were not interested really in whom Christ is. Yeah, right. uh, the only person that can generate an interest in Christ is God himself. Otherwise, you'll never have no interest in him. You'll never have no. Uh, you'll never have any love for him. You'll never have any any. any uh, he'll never have any appeal to you if God doesn't move first, and that is uh, what is necessary. And so we find here that they came really to ambush him, uh, to put him down. No doubt they would have killed him, uh, given the opportunity. And he says one thing later, and it makes them stop in their tracks, but their interest in Christ was superficial. Now, we live in a day and age today where most people's interest in Christ is very superficial. It's about that deep. Whatever feels good to the flesh, and when that's over, uh, they're done with it. So the Lord answers them, and Jesus answered them in verse 25, I told you, and ye believed not. Uh, he, he plainly said, I am the Son of God. Even when he was in his mock trial, uh, uh, the, uh, 
the Jewish leader says, tell us about the Christ. And he says, thou hast said. In other words, you said it. You got it right. I am the Christ. And they accused him of blasphemy. And uh, immediately were ready to crucify him. So uh, it's amazing to me how, how clean it can be to some and how blinded the others are. He says, I've told you I am the Christ. I've told you I am Jesus. And Jesus answered and said, I've told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Now, uh, saying that you're something doesn't make it so. Right. I, I can tell you that I'm a doctor, but I'm certainly not a physician. Uh, uh, that, 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 is, that is just a statement. But my works could back it up. Now, I am a registered nurse, and if you see me about doing my job, what I do backs up the fact that I went to school for four years and, 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 and how I do it. And, and so the Lord Jesus says, you don't have to be sitting here questioning me. You've watched me. You saw what I did. You beheld the things that I did. Now, when you study the Gospels, remember this, the Gospel of Matthew will will present our Lord Jesus Christ as the humble servant, and the Gospel of John presents him King of kings and Lord of lords forevermore. And so we see here plainly, he says, listen, you, you've seen me heal the sick, give sight to the blind, you've seen all of this, and you still ask. Verse 27, very plain verse, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Now, if you underline in your Bible, you underline that one, because that's the hallmark of the redeemed. They follow Christ. You don't have to beg them to church. You don't have to plead with them. You don't have to uh, hit, you don't have to browbeat people into dressing right and looking right and, and living for the Lord and, and giving glory to His name, because if they're His, they'll do it. And you know what a relief when you realize it's not up to you to make anybody do anything. No. Uh, just leave it to the hands of Christ. Uh -huh. and, and, and he will take care of it. And so it says plainly, if you were my sheep, you know exactly who I am. Verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You talk about security of the believer. In one beautiful verse, he, you know what? I can't even pluck myself out of the hand of Christ. Isn't that, isn't that an amazing thing? Mm -hmm. and, and what a glorious security. And let You talk about sleeping well at night. Man, that'll, that'll do it for you. And, and so we find that Jesus says, you know who I am. You know very well who I am. Verse 29, my Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. That's fair. Jesus as God. Jesus is exactly who he says. So is there, is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything outside the possibility? Now, listen, we as sinful man, there's certainly things outside his will, and, and you can't pray up a million dollars, but there's not, it's not outside the possibility. You know what? I believe if I, if I truly needed, and I mean needed, a million dollars, it would come from <laughs> somewhere, because uh, my, my father owns the cattle of a thousand hills. He, he, he is fully capable... Mostly, he knows, I probably couldn't handle a million dollars. <laughs> now, go and read the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter uh, number four. Uh, love Mark's Gospel. Straight and to the point. Very short. Uh, very, very timely. And, and you get the full deal in a very short amount of verses. Gospel of Mark chapter four. And we're going to begin reading in verse 35. Mark chapter 4 and verse 35. The Bible says, 
And the same day, when even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Now, very, very simple plan, very direct course. We're going to cross from this side of the sea to that side of the sea. Now, that seems, that seems easy going. That seems something very simple to follow. But you think, and, uh, and you think about yourself, we are commanded to follow Christ to the end of our days. And that seems simple until the storm comes up. <laughs> until there's no food in the refrigerator. Until, uh, until illness strikes your house. Until, uh, and, and, until there's a car wreck. Until all calamity breaks loose. Until there's no government left. And then it doesn't seem so easy. Following Christ is not, <laughs> is not an easy task. When he gave us that command... Uh, I don't know that we always grasp it for what it is. I don't know that we always understand it uh, when that came. And so he gives them what would seem a very simplistic thing. I want you to go to the other side. Verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves bit, beat into the ship so that it was now full. Now, church, in the midst of a storm, <coughs> he's still God. Now, we're coming up on a year anniversary of um, Stewart County being struck by tornadoes. Brother Junior and Sister Diane's house got a good whack. House beside him is not even there anymore. Uh, it, it, it was a rough, rough time. He's in the midst of that. Now, we don't want to believe, and look at Mayfield. That was the same storm, just unbelievable. It, it, if we weren't so, so far inland, it looked like a hurricane had been through there. You know what? God is in that. Uh, he, he, he directed the course of the tornado. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, Oh, look what the devil done. Don't you give that demon too much credit. He, he, he's not involved in that. Unless the Lord says, okay, you can have the wind for today. And it comes back to me tomorrow. Because that's exactly what he did. He, he directed the course of Job when the, day, the devil was fighting against him. And, and so he says, I'm, so now we learn he's putting them directly in the center of the storm. Very, very deliberate, very, very specific. The plan of God being in the midst of the storm. Now, people don't like that today, but the plan of God for you may be to sit in the very midst of the worst storm ever. And you know what? You need to bear it well. You need to be glad about it. You need to be strong in it because huh, that's where we display the person of Christ. That's where we display our trust in Him. That's where we display our, our, our faith. Never shakes. Now, I also want you to see there was water in the boat. Literally going down. You ever had water in your spiritual boat? I have. And you know what? <laughs> I, I, it was so much water in that boat, I couldn't bail it out. You know what? The more we miss church, and the less we study that book, the more water you're going to get in your boat. Because something's going to take it up. TV, games, whatever, whatever is your vice, it'll fill your boat real quick. And so what, what we need to understand and know in both the spiritual storm and the literal storm, God's in it. He is the creator of all things. The Lord Jesus Christ, as the, when he was in the earth, still had the authority over all the calamity that was going around. Now notice this, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, 
And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Now, I want you to notice a couple of things. First of all, the position of Christ. Now, what, 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 are, what were they called first at uh, Antioch? They were called Christians first at Antioch. They displayed, they displayed the nature of Christ. That's how they got their brand. And it was derogatory. It, it wasn't something to pat you on the back. And so, in the midst of the storm, a literal violent storm, what was Christ doing? Sleeping. He was asleep. And a lot of people say, well, that's just his flesh. No, no. He trusted God. It wasn't his flesh. It was his spirit. <laughs> he had the sweetness of God, the sweetness and the, the trust in the Father, that he was sleeping through the storm. Is that not an amazing, wonderful God that we serve that takes care of us even when we <coughs> are asleep and things and all the things going on about us and around us asleep in the Lord Jesus Christ? Verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. That's literal, y'all. That, that, that actually happened. He hit. And the wind went up a little bit today. And, and can you imagine the sovereign of the universe stepping out in the form of, of mankind and just saying, peace be still. And it says he rebuked the wind. I think that's an interesting statement, the way that, that Mark defines it. You, you know what happens in our house What before a rebuke happens? What has to happen first, Noah? Before a rebuke happens, there has to be there has to be going something down against the rules. <laughs> and then you rebuke your children, right? You, what was against the rules here? Doubting God. Doubting Christ. Doubting in his sufficiency. And so first of all, he rebukes the wind, and then he says to the sea, peace be still. And and they marveled at it. Hey, have you ever been in a situation where you just marvel how the Lord solved it? Ways you never even dreamed of? That something out of nothing? You know what? Our Lord is, is, gets the most honor when something does come out of nothing. When the solution has nothing that we could possibly have done with it. So we find that, that our Lord Jesus Christ <coughs> is sovereign over everything. Uh, I mean, Donald's talking about this, probably he's fussing a little bit about it, complaining, and was your dreading it snowing in the next few months? You know how much snow we're going to get? Exactly as much as the Lord Christ Jesus wants us to have. And, and we should be glad in it. Rejoice and be glad in it. Now, I don't... I don't like to drive it. I don't mind the snow too much. I sure don't like to drive in the ice. But you know what? Be glad in it. Be, be glad that the Lord provided His way. And that's exactly, He's over these elements, y'all. Everything that happens about us, He is in them and He is controlled. <coughs> Gospel of Luke, chapter 8. Luke 8. We're going to begin reading in verse 28. Now another thing that the devil would like you to forget that is always true and just and right is that God is over demons. Devils, how the Bible often refers them to. Um, the prince of devils is Lucifer, Satan. But don't ever forget that a third of the angels was cast where? Not to hell. They were cast to the earth. So those disobedient, rebellious angels are still, uh, still here. And they rebelled with Lucifer. So who is their master? Lucifer still today, right? Yeah. And angels are obedient, good servants. So if Lucifer says jump, 
They ask, how high would you like us to joke? If they say, go attack, attack Jarrett Watson, Jarrett, get on your knees because it's coming. You see what I'm saying? They have that ability. And probably most minimized among Baptists today is the reality that anti that antichrist devils are still very very much a real part of this element and in the and the day which we live they're being honored and worshiped quite quite different in my lifetime and, and, and you know what when people get involved in some of this crazy uh wicca and, and and stuff know that it's real make sure your children understand it's not a game those are real things and then the last thing, and then we'll get into our text. Just know this, if you're lost, you're clear for possession. <coughs> if you're, the Bible says, ye are sealed unto the re day of redemption. And if you're not sealed, uh, Sister Dana and Donna was talking about canon. Ladies, if they don't seal, what happens? Right? It spoils. And so, if the seal's not on you, the door's open, y'all. Another truth minimized by Baptists today is that people can be possessed of devils. But remember this, our God is sovereign. The Lord Jesus Christ is over even that, but just be aware that, it, that it's a reality uh, that can happen. Remember the followers of Christ, Mary Magdalene. The Bible describes her this way. Mary Magdalene, of whom Jesus cast out seven devils. You remember that? And so that is the reality that Baptists almost always, often miss is this reality. So now go to our text, Luke 8, verse 28. The Bible says this, When he, meaning the possessed man, the man of the tombs, the man that lived among uh, uh, among uh, the graves, when he saw Jesus, he cried out, and fell down before him and said with a loud voice and, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. Now, I'll tell you what, the devil had a better understanding. This demon has a better understanding of Christ than many today. First of all, as soon as Christ arrived on the scene, he recognized who he was. That, that that's amazing today, is it not? And then and then secondly, what did he do? He bowed before him. <laughs> that's a lot better than most today, too. See, in eternity past, he knew Christ. He'd seen him sitting at the right hand of the Father back before what we know time was. Mm -hmm. And he gave him great honor then. Mm -hmm. he, he, he knew exactly who he was. And what was his request? Torment me not. You, you know what that devil thought? And we see him in it. I think this is Legion. He thought, it was, he thought the gig was up. He thought time to, the time to go to hell had arrived. Because one day they will be tormented in that sense. They will be clasped into the fire. And he thought it was time. He said, please don't torment me. And, and, and so we see that this devil often has more spiritual sense, but I want you to see the dominion that Christ held above this individual, and the, in, the devil knew it. He knew his name. Verse 29. Verse 29 says, For he, meaning Christ, had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Now in your most desperate situation remember that Christ has the authority um, and the the older you get the more you'll realize there are instances like this that happen all all the time and our God is in control now the reason I think I said something about this Wednesday night or maybe it was last Sunday uh, can you imagine sometime if our eyes were open? We were, we were talking about when Gehazi was alone 
with Elijah on the mountain. Mm -hmm. And he said, and, and Elisha prayed, said, Lord, open his eyes. Mm -hmm. And there was unbelievable things going on all around them. Now that's happening even here today. Because see, the devil, Satan, is always an opposer of the truth. And if the truth is being preached, either he or one of his imps is going to show up. You can depend on it. And, and, and so we find <coughs> that in that situation, and if you're spiritually in tune, you'll certainly understand when that situation comes to pass. Remember, your comfort is this. Christ is in control. Against all hell, Christ is in control. And, and, and never forget that. You have, you have the chief person on your side. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Now notice, notice the results of demonic possession. For oft times it, meaning the devil, had caught him, meaning the individual that was possessed, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the, band, the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. Now I want you to notice two things. The unbelievable strength of the demon just to do like this and pull the chains away. You know what? I'm just being honest. If y'all be honest, y'all say the same thing back to me. That scared me to death. If I saw iron chains and somebody just go and cast it to the side, I'd be shaking in my boots. But remember who has dominion even over that. And, and also remember this. This is a reality that still exists today. Uh, the devil hasn't changed. Uh, he, he a, a demon-possessed individual can certainly have that strength that, that is described in this text, but our God is greater. The Lord Jesus Christ is, is, uh, is in dominion. Now notice the last thing it says, and the devil took him into the wilderness. Now, for those of you that know your Bible, when Elijah got afraid of Jezebel, where did he run? Up into the wilderness, into the mountain. Remember the Lord God come down and said, what doest thou here, Elijah? What are you doing? Don't you remember I'm in control? Don't you remember that I'm the sovereign of the sea? Don't you remember that all I have to say is peace be still? So listen, we're nothing compared to Elijah. So you can get on the run just as quick. You know what? It only take you 15 minutes to pack up and go home. Right? Well, remember, our God is sovereign. When, when, when the most fearful thing faces you, remember the Lord Jesus Christ is still fully in control. We rather need to be bold than fearful. Verse 30. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. Now, I want you to see that God's plan was to throw them, the Lord Jesus' initial plan was to throw them into the sea. And there were and heard of many swine feeding on the mountain, and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter unto them, and he suffered them or allowed them. Now, I want you to see in both those situations that word suffer means allowed, he, that they requested that they be allowed to go into the pigs. Uh, what does that mean? Christ is sovereign. Amen. He's on top. The legion had to get permission to do anything <laughs> that anything was going on. Isn't it a piece in that? Think of the Lord Jesus Christ was that powerful with the confines of this flesh. Now, if you know the rest of this text, Jesus says, go. And I believe Matthew's gospel describes 2,000, a 2,000 hog herd. Mm -hmm. And some people say, well, there were at least 2,000 demons. Well, there might have been more than that. Yeah. <laughs> they might have got more than one apiece. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? right? 
And what was the result after that? It said the swine ran down the hill and was drowned. See, isn't it an, a, a fearful, amazing thing that demonic people can handle demons better than animals? <laughs> Now, I don't know about y'all, you think about the farmer side of this. Matthew and Dess are, I think, two hogs this year? I can't remember. They've got hogs going out there in Idaho. And you know what? I bet if, I bet them hogs ran down the hill and went in the water, uh, it'd make them mad, don't you? That's my hogs. Well, and the, even the keeper ran the town and he was mad too. You know, all that good the ham. And, Side and the midlands, everything was gone. Right? But here we as, as humans, that boy had all of them inside him. And he was okay. I mean, he was, I mean, of course, he, I mean, he was running crazy. But the fact that a human could hold him in. And the hogs couldn't, it's a very, very fearful thought. But praise be, all Jesus said, and I think it's in Matthew's gospel when they made this request, one two little word, go. <laughs> and immediately it happened. Mm -hmm. Immediately they were gone. That's the power of the Lord Jesus Christ over all of Satan, all that needs to be around us is one simple word in one moment, go, you're done. I'm sovereign, you're under me. <laughs> Verse 33, then the devils, then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine, and they the, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled into the city and towed it to the city and the country. And they went out to see what was done, and they came to Jesus. Now notice the results. And found this man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. See, the results after, after salvation are notable. He was calm. He, he was at the feet of Jesus. Uh, he, he, he was... Uh, he was able to take information in. He was in a spiritual situation where he could learn from Christ. He knew what authority was. You know what wrong, is wrong with kids today? They don't know what authority is about. Yeah. Here was this rebellious entity running through the graves and, and biting himself sweetly at the feet of Jesus. And you know why he was down there? Because he was under Jesus' authority now. Man, we don't like that, do we? Bible says this, though, ye are brought with a price. Mm -hmm. Therefore glorify him, which is what? Your reasonable service. Just, just what's reasonable. And, and, and so we see then as the Lord's people huh, that our Jesus, don't stress about the demons. Don't let them influence you, certainly. But they can't, they're all under the authority of Christ, even as I speak all he has to say is go, <laughs> and the situation's over. Now, lastly, but certainly not leastly, go with me to Luke chapter 24. And praise be to God, he can make our eyes to see. Luke 24, and we're going to begin reading in verse 13. Luke 24 and verse 13, the Bible says, And behold, two of them went the, that same day, meaning the discovery on the Lord's Day, Sunday, uh, of Jesus being resurrected, went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they commune together in reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were holding that they that they should know that they should not know him. Now get that in your mind. 
because if you've ever been me and uh, if you've ever been like me, and at one time maybe you were Armenian, and you, man, you've got to see this. That this is so simple. Remember, Christ came with hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He stepped right in the midst of people that already knew him. And the Bible says he held their eyes. They didn't recognize him as Christ. You know what? You know, you know what? Lost people, this is the commonality. They don't recognize him as Christ. They may know about him. I mean, we're in the Bible Belt. But that don't mean they're saved. That's right. They don't see him with spiritual eyes. And... <laughs> Uh, I'm afraid we have way, way too much of that in the modern day. Our churches are weak. They're spindly. And the reason why I think a lot of times is they've never known Christ to start with. Verse 17. <coughs> <coughs> and he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said unto them, Are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Has thou not known the things which are come to pass in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had not been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, Today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not the body, they came saying that they had seen a vision of angels, which said he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but, they saw, but him they saw not. And he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Now, <laughs> and from that time he began to teach them again. And they're walking. It'd be about like walking from here to Clarksville. Um, I don't do that well. And so they had a long way to go. And they were talking of the things of Christ and going along. And they, they related. And they still did not recognize Christ. And you know why? Because he would not revealed himself. He had not manifested himself to them. It's in his dominion. Be patient, parents. The manifestation will come on his time schedule, not on yours. Now... I want to go down to verse 36. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. And they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do your thoughts rise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet. That is, myself, handle me and see, for the spirit and the flesh have not flesh, and for a spirit have not flesh and bones as ye see me have. So I want you to see that the Lord manifests himself on his time schedule. He withholds himself as he would. Talk. But that's what makes it a rich blessing. You ever thought and contemplated? Why did he manifest himself to me? That's a very humbling thought. I'm useless. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it on man's term, there are a lot better people than me. But he did it for me. He, he, he made the gospel real to me. <coughs> you know what? I don't believe when I, when I read glory side... That anybody's going to say that's him over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think that I believe I'll recognize him as soon as my, my feet hit the floor. And I desire to go to him. You, you know what we need to pray for? Yeah. Remember when Paul went blind? 
You know, he'd seen Jesus on the on 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 the road, and the Lord saved him. It said that he had like scales on his eyes afterwards, and uh, uh, he couldn't see no more. That's that that's the that's the condition of a lost person. They got scales on their eyes. They can't see. And it seems all so simplistic to us. But listen, dear friends, have compassion. Pray for them. They're not, they're not shooting you a line, a line when they say, I don't understand. That is genuine. That is true. And what can we possibly do? That, that, that's our duty. That's your duty as a, as a Christian. That is your duty as a parent. That's your duty as a grandparent. Pray, pray, pray. Hey. Amen. That's what we need to do. So I ask you this morning, have you seen Jesus all three ways? Have you seen him with control of the elements, control of all people, control of Satan? Control of your destiny? Have you seen him that way? Anything less, you haven't had a vision of Christ. You know, Pentecostal people talk about visions. Uh, you no. Know, seeing Christ for who he is in truth. That, that's who Christ is. We, uh, we need to glorify him more.